Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. Back in the year 2000, Rod McDougall, myself, several other men and several women met in Washington, D.C. to start this Congressional Prayer Conference. Our purpose statement was to pray America back to one nation under God, and we're doing our best to do that day by day, week by week, and month by month, and we would encourage you to join us. Now, during the next hour, I'm going to be live on the Internet. If you would like to join me, I do have a smartphone here that you can join me on if you would so like to be on the air. This is a speakerphone. If you call in, the whole world will hear your comments. I say that to encourage you to call and let us know what's on your heart and on your mind. One of the things that we put in our purpose was not only to pray America back to one nation under God, but to say that for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we would pray for that purpose and for America. And so we began, and we still do that prayer call right now. This cell phone is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you would like to call and pray with me and for me, and allow us to pray for you, for your family, for your friends, for your church, we would encourage you to give us a call, 24-7. And I'm going to give you that phone number for right now, as well as in the future. Now, Hitchhiker, what is that little red thing? Whoop, it, pop, <laughs> it pops up and then it pops away. And I asked Hitchhiker to tell me what it says, and he can't, re and he can't read that fast. <laughs> Anyway, if you'd like to call us right now, call us on 714-865-8132. That's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Today is a very special day because this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. But I also have a very urgent prayer need personally, ministerially, for our ministry, for our church. And I want to share this story with you today so you'll know how to pray. If in the meantime you have a question, call me on 714-865-8132. I'm going to be giving you a lot of detail today, especially over the last couple of years, about some things that I did that I should not have done, about some things that I tried to do right. And so today's program is going to be dealing with that situation. It's going to be dealing with pray for the church. The title of the program today is pray for the church. Subtitle, pray for First Southern Baptist Church and Pastor Wiley Drake in Buena Park, California. Now, I want to tell you this story. You're welcome to call any time if you have a question, and I'll be glad to answer it as best I know how. Let us begin in prayer. Lord, I will answer God's call to fall on my knees in humility and seek his face in repentance so that he might forgive my sin and heal our land. In Jesus' name, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I come to you as the pastor of this church. God called me here 29 years ago, October the 1st, 1987, to be the pastor, and I've been the pastor all these years. Now, I've not done everything right, but I've tried to operate on the principle of do your best 
and God will do the rest. Sometimes my best is not very good. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Some of the things I'm going to confess today. Now, you Roman Catholic friends, uh, just hang in there with me. My confession may not follow your pattern, but I believe I'm following the Bible pattern. I have committed sins that I need to ask God's forgiveness for. As many of you know, we practice what we call church fair. Not welfare, but church fair. Church fair means we take people in and help them, assist them, counsel them, pray with them, and do what we can to help them come to Jesus, or if they already know Jesus, to come to a closer walk with Jesus. And that brings me to the story for the day. Two years ago, a man by the name of James Stephen, with a V, Davis. James Stephen Davis, a homeless man, a man who had been injured in a plane crash and almost killed, a crippled man, and his wife was almost killed in that plane crash. They were separated and divorced. And James Stephen Davis was homeless. And James Stephen Davis came to us for help. And I, as a pastor, offered him my prayers, my love, and my help. Over the next few months, he became very ill. In fact, because of the accident that he had suffered in the plane crash, he was at the point where he could not walk. And he came to this church for help, and we helped him. And one morning, it was my decision as a pastor that he was in serious medical condition. I'm not a doctor, but I've dealt with all kinds of physical anomalies over the year, the years. And so I said, Mr. Davis, lay down here on the couch in my studio and wait because I'm going to call the paramedics. I call the paramedics, contrary to his desire, but I call the paramedics and they showed up. They did their typical first responder routine, checked his pulse, checked his situation, and said, you need to be taken to the hospital. They took James Stephen Davis to the hospital and they took care of him in the hospital locally. Some friends of mine, doctor friends of mine and nurses took very good care of him. And in a, about 24 hours, I had a meeting with the doctor, the doctors, and said, what can we do to help? How can we pray? And the doctor said, pray for us because we must do what is called a bilateral amputation. A bilateral amputation. And I knew enough to know that meant cutting both legs off. And the doctor, I said, is that correct, doctor? And he said, yes. If we do not cut his legs off, he will die from the contamination of all the poison that's in his system. So we must do a bilateral amputation, cut off both legs to save his life. I prayed about it, and the Lord had me appeal to the doctors to reconsider that drastic surgery. And they said, well, at the very least, we must amputate one leg, and we ought to amputate both. But we know you're a people of prayer, and you're praying for him. So we prayed for James Stephen Davis. We took our prayer warrior, one of my pastor friends, Mark Rafter and others, into the hospital room, and we prayed for healing for James Stephen Davis. And the doctors then reported to us that they would not proceed with the bilateral amputation if we would continue to pray. 
And so we continued to pray, and God healed James Stephen Davis because of his love for him and because of our prayers here at the First Southern Baptist Church. Before long, he was out of the hospital. He had been in the hospital for quite some time. But before long, he was out of the hospital and able to walk again, even with a bad leg. In that healing, God healed his right leg absolutely, 100%, completely. The left leg, actually the left foot, was not completely healed. And so James Davis needed a period of recuperation and service. And so I, as the pastor of this homeless shelter, allowed Mr. Davis, James Stephen Davis, to put in what he called a hospital bed into one of our storage rooms here at the church. Actually, it was a storage room next to what used to be at this church, our nursery. And our nursery had a little kitchen in it. And uh, I allowed Mr. Davis to put his hospital bed in that room to recuperate. Now, at that point, Mr. Davis continued to help us with this television program and to help us minister to the poor and the homeless. And he continued to dwell here in this storage room on his hospital bed to recover. At that point is when many of you heard about the fact that we were fighting with the city of Buena Park. Buena Park did not want us to take him in. Buena Park did not want us to have homeless people here on church property. And so Buena Park came out here with a warrant and made me stay out of the shelter, and they tore the shelter down and moved it away and stole it from us. Mr. Davis had shared with me that he was an attorney. Now, he did share with me that he had a current bar number and that he was currently an attorney, but he was suspended voluntarily because of problems he had had. And the fact of the matter is, as we've investigated, we found out they were going to try to disbar him, and he very quickly resigned his commission so as not to be disbarred. Along that same time, some other things happened, but we'll talk about that a little later. But Mr. Davis then, as an attorney, said, Pastor Drake, I will help you. I have legal expertise. I know how to fight the city from taking over your church and I welcomed his legal expertise because I'm a pastor, not a lawyer. So over the next year, he counseled me and told me what to do legally. At that point, he suggested to me that we deed a part of our property, a 3,500 square foot area of our property that we deed it to him personally because he was fighting a case in court over his airplane crash and needed money for attorneys. And he said if we would deed, let me say not we but I, if I would deed as a pastor of the church that 3,500 square foot of property to him, he could borrow money on that property and be able to to fight his case in court. Now, it was not known to me at that time, but he was also fighting another case where he had $1,600,000 decision against him because of his reneging on child support payments, and he was going to fight that. He was also fighting to take a man's house away from him who was, in his opinion, responsible for the plane crash. And therefore, he said, if you will deed that little piece of property to me, 
I can borrow enough money on it to go to court and to be able to win this victory. So I said, yes, I would be willing as a pastor of the church to deed that 3,500 square foot of property to him if indeed uh, he would help us. And so he agreed to do so. So he, as an attorney, drew up the legal documents that would issue a title to that 3,500 square feet of property. Now, let me hasten to say, I told him at that point, whatever paperwork, I'm not a lawyer, but I said, whatever paperwork you put out, whatever paperwork you file, I do not want to encumber the rest of our property. We have a church here. We have seven churches that meet here. We have uh, all kinds of ministries. And I did not want to encumber the rest of that ministry. Mr. Davis assured me that that would happen, that it would only be deeded that little piece of property, 3,500 square feet. Well, later he came back to me and conned me into believing that in order to get that piece of property in his name, we had to use the general address of the church here at 6801 Western Avenue. I disagreed with that, but I went along with it, and so he put that property in his name. And when he did that, he manipulated the paperwork so that the total address here at 6801 Western Avenue would be deeded to him and he would own all the church property. I disagreed with that and I told him I didn't want that. I only wanted to deed that small piece to him. But the paperwork that he put out and the filings that he did, and by the way, the courts have ruled him a vexatious litigator. And so he had a lot of problems getting the paperwork through because a vexatious litigator must indeed run everything through the court. Now, at that point, he continued with his con game on me. That's why I say I had to go to the Lord and ask God to forgive me for being so gullible. But I was trying to help a homeless man who was in trouble, body, soul, and spirit. And I'm not saying this to brag, but had we not, had I not, and others prayed for James Stephen Davis, he would be dead today. But God saw fit to answer our prayer. Now at that point, I began to get notices from people who wanted to buy the property because they said Mr. Davis was putting church property up for sale. I had some people say, why in the world are you selling your church? And I said, I'm not. And they said, no, the records show that the property is owned by James Stephen Davis, not the First Southern Baptist Church of Buena Park, and James Stephen Davis has placed it on the market for sale. I confronted Mr. Davis, and he agreed that yes, that's what he had done because he needed to get a loan to cover that million and a half child support case that he had. And he continued with that paperwork and then began to turn against me as a pastor and began to say that if I didn't cooperate, he would file paperwork and I would be evicted from the property because the property, he said, now belongs to him. Well, I don't know what the paperwork says. I don't know what the legal system is. But I do know the Bible. And I do know that God's people founded this church. And this church doesn't belong to James Stephen Davis. This church belongs to the people. A lot of people have asked me over the years, Pastor, why don't you sell some of that property? And I made it very clear to them, I could not sell that property if I wanted to. Oh, yes, you're the pastor. You can deed the property. No, I'm the pastor, 
and it's my responsibility to protect the church. And I have not done a very good job, but I've done the best job I know how trying to help poor and homeless people, and I got scammed, and literally now the property, if you do a title check, you will find that the property at 6801 Western Avenue belongs to one James Stephen Davis. First of all, let me say, if you go to the court, you will find James Stephen Davis is a vexatious litigator. You look that up and you'll see. Now, another thing that the system will tell you if you look up James Stephen Davis, you will find that he is a convicted criminal. He was convicted of impersonating a police officer. He wanted to go into the court and he showed a phony badge and phony papers and demanded that he be allowed as a police officer in the courtroom without being searched. Now, he does carry a weapon, and there are people that are concerned over this man that he might do damage to them. Even the police asked me about it, and we investigated and found out that he does not carry a weapon. He carries a BB gun. Now, he's encouraged me to say it's not a BB gun. It's called an airsoft gun. Basically, it has a charge of air, and it shoots little pellets out. They're not fatal, but they can be very painful. So the gun he carries is a toy, and I want to make you aware of that. But I want to make you aware he carries a gun. He is a convicted criminal. The court records show that he was convicted of impersonating a police officer and received probation and community service for being a criminal impersonating a police officer. And then he began to get more and more vicious. I asked him and told him that since he had Flim flammed us so bad, I did not welcome him here on the property. And I'm saying now to the whole world, James Stephen Davis is not welcome on the property at 6801 Western Avenue. Now, Mr. Davis would tell you, and probably will tell the police, that he is the current owner. The city of Buena Park recognizes his vexatious litigation his vexation uh, rules that says it's in his name. But I don't care what the paperwork says. My Bible says I am God's anointed, and you dare not touch God's anointed, not because I'm so holy, not because I'm so good, but because God gave me the position of pastor of the First Southern Baptist Church of Buena Park. Now, our state organization, the Southern Baptist Convention of California, and our local organization, denominationally, the Orange County Southern Baptist Association, are helping us in this effort. And so I thank the Lord for them, and I pray that you would help me to pray for this man and what he has indeed done to this church. Now, I went before the Lord, and I confessed my sin. I prayed that prayer that I shared with you. I said, I will answer God's call to fall on my knees in humility and seek his face in repentance. And I went before the Lord, and I said, Dear Lord, please forgive me for being so gullible. In my own justification, I was trying to help a homeless man who was dying. And I believe God used our ministry to save his life. And then he turned on us and put the church property in the name of James Stephen Davis. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're doing everything we possibly can to 
fight this battle. But I need your help. I'm not asking you for money. I'm not asking for lawyers. We have a very good lawyer, and we're going to fight the thing legally. But, ladies and gentlemen, this church has been invaded by a demon called James Stephen Davis. God healed him trying to get his attention. But James Stephen Davis is on his way to hell, not just because he flim-flammed us, but he's on his way to hell because he does not know Jesus as Lord and Savior. That's why he's going to hell. Just last evening, he was yelling and cussing like a sailor, saying he was going to shoot somebody because they tried to get into his room. And fact of the matter is, he sent me an email that said he was handicapped and I couldn't lock him in a room. And I didn't lock him in a room. The room that he is in has two or three entrances to it and the back door to it He's the only one that has a key for it. He went out and bought a deadbolt and put it on the door so no one else could get in there. And then we put a deadbolt on the other door to protect our family, to protect the men and women, the women primarily, because James Stephen Davis was going into the restroom even if the ladies were there. And so... To protect those ladies, we put a deadbolt on the door going to the bathroom. Mr. Davis said, you can't lock up a handicapped man. And I said to him, we did not. You are handicapped, and he has a key, the only key, to the deadbolt that opens the back door on the south side of the building so he can still get out. Now, he does have a little wheelchair scooter, and it's a little bit difficult to get in and out of the doors, and he wants special privileges. James Stephen Davis, as I know, I think, is on property right now as we speak. If I were to call the police and tell them I wanted him out of here, they would probably say, no, James Stephen Davis has a title deed to his name on this property, and the police could do nothing. But that does not limit the power of this church. I want to ask all of you to do several things. First of all, I want you to write down James Stephen, with a V, Davis. And I want you to put it on your prayer list. And I want you to pray for him. You've prayed for him before and God saved his life. But I'm asking you now to ask God to get him off church property. He cusses like a sailor uh, to the women and the men. And he's vicious and he's vile and he's harming the atmosphere at the First Southern Baptist Church and says, this is my property. I own it. I can evict Pastor Wiley Drake. Well, God called me here, and God's the only one that can evict me. I don't care what James Stephen Davis gets. Now, I want to ask you to agree with me in this prayer. You don't have to say anything other than, Jesus, I agree. But here's the prayer I want to ask you to agree with me for James Stephen Davis. Hold not thy peace, O God of my praise. The mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are opened against us. James Stephen Davis says he owns church property and spoken against us with a lying tongue. They compassed me about with words of hatred and fought against us without a cause. James Stephen Davis has threatened my life. He threatened to shoot me with his little toy gun, but it is dangerous. 
for my love, they are our adversary. But I give myself to prayer. And that's why I'm asking you to pray with me and for me. But most of all, pray for this church. We have a group of seven churches that meet here on a daily basis. We have a group of men, women, boys, and girls. And ladies and gentlemen, they are in danger because James Stephen Davis is still here on property. For our love, they're our adversaries, and they've rewarded us evil for good and hatred for our love. We loved him enough to pray God would heal him, and God did heal him, but he hates us and threatens to have me arrested if I don't leave his property. And I want you to agree with me in this prayer. Set thou a wicked man over him, and let Satan stand at his right hand. When he shall be judged, and he shall be judged. Not maybe in the courts, but ladies and gentlemen, I'm not bringing this to the court. I'm bringing this to the court of public appeal and to the high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ. And yes, I do have an attorney. Pray for him. And, uh, but my senior attorney is Yeshua HaMashiach. And that's the one fighting my case. When, didn't say if, it said when James Stephen Davis shall be judged, let him be condemned and let his prayer become sin. Let his days be few and let another take his office. Let his children would you agree with me in this prayer? Let his children be fatherless and his wife a widow. Let his children be continually vagabonds and beg. Let them seek their bread also out of their desolate places. Let the extortioner catch all that he has and let the strangers spoil his labor. Let there be none to extend mercy to James Stephen Davis. Neither let there be any to favor his fatherless children. Let his prosperity be cut off, and in the generations following, let his name be blotted out. Let the iniquity of his fathers and mothers be remembered with the Lord, and let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. Let them be before the Lord continually that he may cut off the memory of them from the earth because he remembered not to show mercy. So ladies and gentlemen, Psalms 109. Psalms 109. There's about 30 verses there. And I would encourage you to pray for Wiley. I am forgiven. Yes, I made mistakes. Yes, I got what I call SOS. I got stuck on stupid because I let a man who said he was an attorney, said he had God's interest at hand, but he had his own selfish greed for money to pay for his child support settlement that he lost many years ago. James Stephen Davis has been married twice, and I pray for his dear wife, Brenda. I've talked to her. She is not married to him anymore, but she was hurt in the accident, and she's cooperating with him to try to get money from our property out of that greed situation. So I would ask you to pray for Brenda as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, I have confessed my sin to the Lord Jesus Christ. And in spite of the fact that I'm still reaping the benefits of my stupidity and the benefits of the attack by James Stephen Davis, 
I am in God's hand, and I am on property that belongs to the First Southern Baptist Church of Buena Park. And I will not leave this church until God tells me to leave. And so I encourage you, pray with me, pray for me, and help me to know what to do. Please continue to pray. Now, I'm going to shift gears a little bit, but I'm going to say this show is going to be titled, Pray for the Church in Buena Park. The Bible says this is God's church. And the name of the church is called Buena. That's good in Spanish. And Park, good Park. So would you pray for this church? And would you pray against James Stephen Davis? Pray God's will against him at this point. And with that in mind, if you have any questions, you're welcome to call me. Mr. Davis is welcome to call. He used to come on this program. But ladies and gentlemen, I need your help. And I know that you love the Lord. And I know the Lord loves me. And this may be continually detrimental because we have a vicious a vicious litigator and we have a convicted criminal but most of all we have a very demonic man named James Stephen Davis here on holy ground at the first southern baptist church and we're going to continue on with our program, but right now we're going to go into another portion of our prayer. Come on around, Brother Gary. And one of the things that we do every day, <coughs> we ask people to pray. I have already asked Brother Gary, and we've been talking about the James Stephen Davis fiasco, and so we're not going to go in that any further. But uh, this gentleman is a member of this church, this gentleman is also a member of the Congressional Prayer Conference, and I'm going to move my stuff and get the microphone over to him because we have deputy prayer warriors, and we would encourage you to be a deputy prayer warrior. And we would encourage all deputy prayer warriors to pray imprecatory prayer against James Stephen Davis, who has taken over legally, he says, this property and he can evict me as pastor well he didn't call me here God did and I ain't going nowhere till God calls me away but in the meantime we want to continue our duty as prayer warriors, and we appoint people as deputy prayer warriors and I'm going to put the microphone over with this deputy prayer warrior and have him introduce himself and share with us his specialty in being a deputy prayer warrior. Hi, my name is Gary, and uh, I'm a prayer warrior, as Pastor says. Prayer warrior because I pray, and my prayers are war against Satan. So, that's I guess that's why we call ourselves prayer warriors. Amen. And at any rate, I uh, I pray for many things, but uh, every day I pray for uh, my specialty, which is our first responders. And these are people that are close to my heart, people I just love, these first responders, these are our military, uh, law enforcement, uh, firefighters. Anytime you call 911 and you have an emergency, you need somebody out to, to where you're at, uh, they, they ask you if you want police or fire or paramedics. And those are the first responders among, among others. And they have a special place in my heart because they these are people that uh, run towards a gunfire when everybody else is running away. Uh, they run into burning buildings and everybody's running out. These are our military that serve in, you know, hell holes all over the, all over the world, Amen. protecting us. And uh, they don't get enough credit, they don't get enough respect, and they sure don't get enough money for what they do. 
but uh, they get they get prayers from us. So Amen. I wanted to uh, pray for them. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the many blessings you give to us this day and every day. We come to you, Father. We ask your blessing, first of all, on our pastor, Wiley Drake, as he faces the, the obstacles set before him, as he fights the, the, the Satan and Satan's minions he, that he sent here uh, to be his adversary, uh, trying to stop him from doing your work. We pray your blessing on him. We pray you give him your strength and, and your wisdom as he fights these battles. And we pray for our, uh, his backup, his staff, his uh, people that are, that are helping him out in this battle. Uh, Brother James the Hitchhiker, Brother Will, all the people here that are staff that back him up and help him. Uh, his uh, legal staff, just every one of them, we ask your blessing on them and your strength and wisdom for them. We ask, Father, you bring home our, our brother, uh, Pastor Andrew Brunson, from the Turkish prison where he's wrongly being held as a terrorist. Uh, please bring him home to his family as soon as possible. And we pray that uh, as long as he's in the prison, maybe he brings some of these Muslims to know Jesus Christ. And we ask, Father, your blessing on all of our first responders, all of our military, both uh, active duty and veterans, uh, those here uh, stateside, those overseas, all of our law enforcement, federal, state, and local, our firefighters, our paramedics, uh, the ambulance drivers and the tow truck drivers and the EMTs and the prison guards and border patrol and harbor patrol and anyone else I'm missing, Father, all these people that serve and protect us in our, they serve the country, they serve our communities, they put on the uniform and the badge and put their lives on the line. We ask your blessing on them and your hand of protection over them, Father. We ask for those who've been injured in the line of duty, we ask your healing hand over them, make them whole, bring them back to health. Uh, and we ask your, your blessing on those who've lost loved ones in the line of duty. Uh, we ask that you help heal their hearts, help them deal with their pain, help them cope with their loss, and help them understand that one day, Father, you'll call them home, and when you do, they'll see their loved ones once again. And we ask all this in the name of our Lord and Savior, your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Well, Brother Gary, thank you for that. And God bless you. And ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to be a deputy prayer warrior, uh, as uh, Gary is, all you got to do is give me a call. My phone number is 714-865-8132. Call me up and say, hey, I am a prayer warrior. I do pray, and I want to be recognized as such. You can have your own specialty like uh, first responders or children or whatever. And I would ask maybe some of you deputy prayer warriors out there would designate yourself as protective warriors for the church. We've been talking today about the church here in Buena Park being attacked. And if you'd like to call and talk to me, my phone number is 714-865-8132. And in just a moment, I'm going to get up from the desk go around behind the camera and close out this show and we're going to title this show pray for first southern baptist church buena park that's going to be the title of the show thank you brother gary brother gary has to go to work and uh, so he's on his way he is both boots on the ground and prayer in the air and we would encourage you to do the same thing. Call me on 714-865-8132. And if you'll do that, we'll pray with you and pray for you. And I would close this out to simply say, we're going to title today's show, Pray for the Church in Buena Park. We're going to title today's show, Pray for First Southern Baptist Church of Buena Park. Would you join us in that prayer? I would appreciate it. And by the way, Lord, if there's anything I've said that's been wrong, I would pray you'd erase it from our minds. But Lord, I've done everything I know to do to be the pastor that you want me to be for this church. And Lord, I don't care what James Stephen Davis says or anybody else says. I'm not leaving until you tell me to leave. So Lord, thy will be done in Jesus' name.